You're listening to Catholic Express, the daily podcast for Catholic kids that strives to plant seeds of faith. Hey there, Sprouts. Today is Friday, January 1st, 2021. Welcome to the new year. Today is also a important solemnity. Today is the feast day of Mary, the mother of God, a very important feast day where we remember that Jesus Christ entered the world through one of his most perfect creations, our blessed mother, Mary. She continues to be our mother, the mother of the church, the surest and shortest path to her son, Jesus Christ, a powerful intercessor for us and someone that loves you and knows you as only a mother can. So remember that, celebrate her today, look at her image, say a rosary, all of the things. Mary is a great gift to us and never forget that. Now, Sprouts, all week long, we have been talking about the family. We have been talking about how the family is the most important building block in society and how our job within our families is to discern and say yes to the mission that God has given specifically to us. We've looked at all sorts of Old Testament families to learn about this. We've looked at the story of Abraham and Isaac the story of Moses as a child and then while he grew up. And then yesterday we looked at the story of Hannah and Samuel, the man that would become a great prophet for the nation of Israel. Now today we are going to step over into the New Testament and we're going to look at one of the very few stories that we have of the Holy Family. Remember, most of Jesus's growing up years are completely hidden from us. We don't really hear much about their life back in Nazareth at all. We hear that Jesus was obedient to his parents, that he grew in wisdom with their help. We do have one kind of strange story that happens when Jesus is a boy, and that story happens in Jerusalem. So in case you don't remember, here is the story. Because they were devout Jews, Mary, Joseph, and Jesus, and many of their families and relatives from Nazareth would journey down to Jerusalem a couple times a year to celebrate the big feast days. They would walk there as part of a big caravan or big group and camp out at night, and it would take several days to walk there. While they were there, they would celebrate the feast days in the temple, and when it was done, they would start the journey back to Nazareth. Well, one of these times... Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem and Mary and Joseph didn't realize this until they had been walking away from Jerusalem for a whole day. You can imagine how this would happen if you're part of a big family, which Jesus probably was. Maybe you go and you're walking next to a cousin, like a good friend that's a cousin. You're with his family. Your parent at least thinks that you're there. And then only at night when you're sitting down to your meal, do you realize, wait, he wasn't with that family like I assumed all day. So of course, like any good parents, Mary and Joseph were very concerned. They hurried back to Jerusalem and then they spent three days, three days searching for Jesus. You can imagine how worried they were during this time and all sorts of possibilities were racing through their minds. What had happened to him? Where was he? Jerusalem was a big city with many people. Eventually, we know that they found Jesus in the temple and so crazy He was teaching the teachers. He was there with all of the Jewish scholars gathered around him, listening to him, this child, explain their faith in scripture to them. Now, Mary has had a rough couple of days. She goes up to Jesus and she says, why are you here? Didn't you know that your father and I would be worried? And what's so interesting is Jesus's response. He doesn't say, oh, I'm sorry I did that to you. He says, didn't you know that I would have to be about my father's work? Now, this is strange. It might sound a little bit odd that Jesus would speak to his mother this way, but we need to listen a little bit closer and wonder, why is this story included? 
And as members of families, as children growing up with parents right now, what is there to learn here? Well, immediately after the story, we are told that Jesus, of course, did go back to Nazareth with his parents, and we hear that he was obedient to them. So this is not a story about disobedience. It's not a story that's giving you permission to be disobedient to your parents. In fact, it's the opposite. Instead, it is a story about doing your embracing your mission and your purpose in your life. It's a story about knowing that your first obligation is to God himself. That is our first obligation. Jesus stayed behind to teach the teachers of the faith in Jerusalem because that is what he was sent here to do. And when he starts his public ministry, he does this often. He spends many days in the temple teaching. There's another powerful lesson here for parents. Now, parents, we can obviously protect our children and seek for them when they are lost like Mary and Joseph do. But there's an important lesson that we need to remember, and that's this. Our children belong to God. We have been entrusted with their care. It is a great honor for us, but they belong to God. Mary and Joseph knew that. They searched all of Jerusalem, concerned about his safety. But ultimately, when they don't respond, when Jesus tells them that he is here doing his father's work, they accept that. They see that. They know that he belongs to God first and foremost, and so do our children. So there is a lot to unpack and to think about as we apply to our own individual lives. Once again, this is not a story about being disobedient to our parents. It is about accepting a greater obedience to our ultimate Father, God the Father in heaven, to be obedient to all of his callings and all that he has planned for us to do and to accept. So Sprouts, we are going to wrap out this wrap up this week with our final Bible search. This story, the story of finding Jesus in the temple comes from the book of Luke, which is one of the gospels in chapter two, towards the end of the chapter. So I'm going to make you hunt for the verses, but go ahead, grab your Bible for the last time this week and find Luke chapter two and look for the verses about finding the child Jesus in the temple. That's it for Catholic Sprouts today. We'll be back tomorrow, but until then, continue to grow in your faith and truly sprout into the beautiful creation that God created you to be. Just one more thing. I hope that you and your families are enjoying a continued celebration of Christmas. Also, our new app, the Domestic Church Project app, will be live and enrolling new families starting on January 1st. And the doors will only be open until January 6th. So if your family is desiring more, more formation and more community, I encourage you to come on over and check it out. You can find the direct link in the notes for this podcast episode.